Now, before we talk about condensation polymerization, I think it is a good idea to talk about condensation reaction involving uh, acid plus alcohol to give me ester, right? Acid plus alcohol to give me ester plus water. Because polymerization is just an application, you know, it's just an extension of esterification or condensation reaction. So this is our condensation reaction between acid plus alcohol to give me ester plus water. And you notice I box up water in two ways. Huh? And if you box up water in either way, actually the product turns out to be the same. So some of us are maybe not so bothered about it. We will think that it doesn't really matter, you know, I box up water in this way, I box up water in this way, I'll end up with the same product. So does it really matter? Now, of course, the product, there's no difference. But what matters is the mechanism. And it is not possible for both mechanisms to be correct. Cannot be both also will occur. Uh, because if I consider boxing up the water in this way, then the reaction, uh, this condensation reaction is between acid carbon, alcohol, oxygen. So acid carbon, it is the electrophile. Alcohol, oxygen, it is the nucleophile. Just based on charge of my carbon and my oxygen. Conversely, if I consider boxing up water in this way, then the reaction is between acid oxygen and alcohol carbon. So now your acid oxygen becomes the nucleophile and your alcohol carbon becomes the electrophile. So it's not possible for both mechanisms to be true and both occur at the same time because the nature of the species are opposite, you know. Acid is acting as the electrophile in one scenario and it acts as a nucleophile in another scenario. It's not possible for both of them to be true. Eh? Only one of them has to be the answer. Because electrophile and nucleophile are so different, right? The charges are opposite. So the mechanism is like entirely different. So it's not possible for both to be correct. Only one of them has to be correct. So the correct one is this guy here. Acid carbon acting as an electrophile, alcohol oxygen acting as a nucleophile. And we need to be able to determine who is the E plus and who is the NU minus so that we can do prediction in terms of reactivity. So we will build on that along the way. So if I box up water in this way, I'll get this product. I think one way to remember which is the electrophile and the nucleophile. Usually how I like to do this is if I look at my ester, esters there are two oxygen, correct? So you just keep in mind there are two oxygen in ester bond. One oxygen actually belong to the acid, one oxygen belong to the alcohol. So if you try to split this two oxygen, one give to acid, one give to alcohol, naturally this is the bond that you'll be breaking. You're breaking this carbon oxygen bond, this carbon single bond to oxygen. Then one oxygen belong to the acid, the double bond O belong to the acid, the single bond O actually belong to my alcohol. So this bond that I'm breaking here, this is the ester bond that is formed during condensation reaction. This is also the ester bond that will be broken during hydrolysis of your ester to form back your acid plus alcohol. So do keep this in mind. Again, this idea is very important because I need to correctly decide who is the electrophile and who is the nucleophile. Acid carbon is the electrophile, alcohol oxygen is the nucleophile. Because once I can decide, oh, this acid is supposed to be an E+, plus, oxygen is supposed to be an O-, minus, then how do I predict reactivity? It's very simple. If I want the reaction to occur fast, this acid carbon, since it's supposed to be an E+, plus, it should be as positive as possible, correct? The more positively charged this acid carbon is, the more reactive this will be. Similarly, this oxygen, uh, if it is functioning as a nucleophile, it should be as negative as possible. If this oxygen is very negatively charged, the reactivity will go up. Then the next thing we do is we understand, oh, this carbon is supposed to be a positive, as positive as, as possible. This oxygen is supposed to be as negative as possible. What if my acid carbon is attached to a donating group, a withdrawing group to benzene? Then how is the charge of my carbon affected? We can use it to predict reactivity. Similarly, if I consider oxygen, this oxygen, O- is supposed to be as negative as possible. What if it is attached to donating groups, withdrawing groups, attached to benzene? the charge on my carbon will be affected and therefore the reactivity will be affected. So you notice, in order for us to predict reactivity, whether this specific acid or specific alcohol, is it more reactive or less reactive, then we actually need to know what is the role or what is the function of this guy during the reaction. Is it supposed to function as an electrophile or is it supposed to function as a nucleophile? So we just need to have some idea involving this, then it's very easy for me to predict reactivity. Again, you notice, when we look, draw this electrophile nucleophile, we are not trying to draw the mechanism in detail. We are not so interested in that. It is related to mechanism, but we are not zooming into detail 
We're not interested in how many steps are there in the mechanism, which step is fast or slow, how do I draw the arrow pushing, and then what are all the intermediates that are being formed. We're not interested in that. I'm just interested in, during this reaction, who is the E plus and who is the NU minus. Actually, that's it. Huh? So don't have this impression thinking that when we talk about mechanism, or oh, we have to draw the arrow pushing, then we have to memorize the steps. Actually, no. It's a very simple idea. Just identifying who is the electrophile and who is the nucleophile. So we want to extend this idea to condensation polymerization. Now, this condensation polymerization is not really in syllabus. That means if I consider forming polymer, a synthetic polymer, which is plastic, plastic is a synthetic polymer, it's not really in syllabus. But in my opinion, I think it's a application, it's an application involving condensation reaction to form esters. Because if I consider the polymer, and if you're given the polymer, the ester functional group is obviously there. So it's actually very easy for me to break the ester bond and I work out the monomer. What is the monomer that forms this polymer? It's actually very easy. We actually don't really need to explicitly talk about it. If they give you application question, when we look at the functional group, we roughly know what to do. So condensation polymers such as polyesters, polyamides. In terms of application, I think it is fair for them to ask such questions because we can use reactions that is in syllabus huh, to handle this, no problem. Earlier we mentioned uh, we mentioned that this synthetic polymer, which is plastics, is not in syllabus, but the idea involving polymerization is still in syllabus. What we are doing is we're not doing plastics, we're not forming synthetic polymers. The polymer that we're forming uh, is our protein. Protein is a naturally occurring polymer because the protein is just all the amino acid form peptide bonds and then they form one continuous string of amino acids linked together by your peptide bond. So basically, your protein is also a polymer. It's just a naturally occurring polymer. So at least we want to have this idea that this concept involving polymerization is still in syllabus, but we do it in proteins. So again, I think this is the reason why it is a good idea to at least talk about our plastics, synthetic polymers, because we should have the concept to try to handle it. It's not difficult at all, so we just want to comment on it. All right? So in this case, I have a diacid and a diol, just one example involving a condensation polymer. So what happens basically is your monomer number one, because I have two acid groups on both ends, I'll form an ester bond with an alcohol on the left-hand side, with an alcohol on the right-hand side. And then similarly, my diol will do the same thing. I'll form an ester bond with an acid on the left-hand side, with an acid on the right-hand side. So it will be an alternating monomer number one joined to monomer number two, joined to monomer number one and number two, and so on. So the repeat unit will be one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And what we can do is we can just draw the simplest unit. Number one joined to number two. I can bracket this whole thing, subscript N, because you have N of this diacid and N of this diol. So this is the simplest unit. You notice the bond that is linking monomer number one and monomer number two together is your ester bond. So we can say that, oh, it is the ester linkage. Ester linkage is just an ester bond linking all the monomers together. So all these monomers are joined together via ester linkages or ester bond. So this is the reason why we call this plastic, this polymer, a polyester. So if it is forming amide bond, then I'll just call this a polyamide. Two very common types of plastics that we encounter. And again, I think that it is actually very simple for us to understand that because if I consider the reaction, acid plus alcohol to give me ester, actually this reaction is in syllabus. We uh, do learn them. So we shouldn't find this reaction unfamiliar. We know how to convert ester from acid plus alcohol. So if I give you the monomer, we should be able to build this up to form the polymer. It's actually quite easy because the reaction is in syllabus. Now, conversely, if you're given the polymer and I ask you, can you figure out what is the monomer? It's also very easy because the ester bond is obvious. An ester function group, there are not many reactions, only hydrolysis and reduction. And very instinctively, we will know that, okay, I'll just hydrolyze this guy because ester is acid plus alcohol, right? So if I have an ester, very instinctive for us to break it back to acid plus alcohol. And the reaction for us to hydrolyze this ester is the same, right? If I want to hydrolyze this ester linkage in this polyester 
and the way for me to hydrolyze the ester bond to form back acid plus alcohol, the reagents and conditions is effectively the same. So we can also, given the polymer, I break this ester bond, I form back the monomer. If it is polyamide, also the same. Because amide, we will also learn that if I have a amide function group, I can also hydrolyze it back to the acid and nitrogen compound. So in my opinion, it's not difficult for us to figure out the conversion from monomer to polymer or the polymer back to monomer. So I think it is reasonable for them to ask such questions. It's not difficult. Huh? We have the concept in syllabus to handle this. We just want to comment on the number of water that is being formed. So this one is the rationale in terms of the thinking process because it's quite often that we would think that the number of mole of water is just 2N water because acid plus alcohol, 1 acid plus 1 alcohol will give me 1 ester plus 1 water if I focus on the amount of water formed. So if it is diacid and diol, we just do by proportion, right? We just do mathematics, we just mark up. If it is double acid, double alcohol, so just two times the number of water. N of this diacid, N of this diol, we just again mark up by proportion n times of that, 2n water. So usually we would think of, oh, if it is n diacid and n diol, then the number of water kicked out will be 2n water. But you have to remember this is not uh, infinite. The polymer is not infinite. There's always an end to it, right? At the head and the tail, there's always an end to it. So the head of the polymer, I'll have an OH group because it's not bonded to nothing, not bonded to empty, uh, to empty space. And the tail of the polymer, we have a hydrogen involving the alcohol and we have a hydrogen. So this means that there's actually one water that is still at the beginning and at the end of the polymer chain. So therefore, I need to minus back one water to account for this water that is still in the polymer. So this is the reason why the number of water that is being formed is actually 2n minus 1. It's not just 2n. So good to take note of that. In case they write out this equation and they ask us to balance the equation, in terms of how much water that is being formed. So in my opinion, condensation, polymerization, forming polyesters, forming polyamides are very manageable because the reactions involving condensation reaction to form esters and condensation reaction to form amide is in syllabus. Hydrolyzed ester, hydrolyzed amide, that means from the polymer back to the monomer, is also in syllabus. So it shouldn't give us uh, any problem at all.